Honda forever. Forever and ever. <laughs> I don't know if that, they say that. I'm just watching the Avengers movies with my kids now, so. Getting ready for like a they don't phase know, four. They don't know that End War is a movie yet. They, we just watched Infinity Wars, and spoiler alert, it doesn't end well for the Avengers. But um, so I was like, that's it. And they're like, wait, what? I'm like, yeah, have a good night. <laughs> so much fun. Anyway, modeling amps versus tube amps. We're no not, one's ever talked about this in the internet before, we're, so we're excited. We're excited to bring it to you. And we're not doing a breakdown of which ones sound we're better. We're just talking about we're it, talking. You know? and because it, we, it's it's been a, it's been something we get get brung up every once in a while. Yeah, I just watched a video the other day on it. Who who was who's that? Tone Junkie TV. Okay, was it a decent video. He was a good video. He boldly declared, not that they were as good modelers, they were better. Aha, that's like that's and that's a good sort of thumbnail to kind of get some views and. I think so. That's smart. Um, but I don't think it was a, uh, you know, it, no. it seemed not to be just bait. It was actually bait. He, he you know, clickbait, as they as they say. Well, and this, this um, might seem crazy coming from Baxter, who's, a, I'm a tube amp junkie. We love tube amps. Maybe they are better. In some scenarios. For certain things. I think 100%. Like, if you're not wanting to have good tone or fun. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> right. That was so perfect. That was good, wasn't it? <laughs> you don't have fun in your life. It's kind of like, do you want to have a Mustang that makes a cool sound in your car nope. when you start it up? And like, and it gives you that torque love, when you push it? I love my little Prius. <laughs> do you want... It's like or my a, 07 Honda Ridgeline. Just, just <laughs> Sorry. That, that Sorry, was too, it was too easy. You kind of had a little fun. <sighs> no, no, it does. It serves a great purpose in certain settings, which I think 100% I would suggest using them. Churches. Churches are great. Sometimes in the recording studio, sometimes in live settings too, it might make sense. If you're flying to a gig. If you're flying, yeah, like get the, <laughs> have it all in the box. You know? Have it all. It just makes life easier. Now, I've worked with some pretty high end professionals. Yes. And this stuff's been around. I've seen it happen, even with the guys that are out there touring right now. And it still isn't the same. It's, it's not the same. It's not the same. It, it is better for ease of use. It's better for consistency of sound. It's better for consistency of getting the mic levels. They're not miking. You're getting a box mic sound out that you want. But there's something still missing, I think. Even if I had one, I can't imagine not having both, right? Um, you know, just because it's just so much fun to have your amp on the stage and to, have, to hear it, right? Well, let's say you're working all in ears. Yeah. Um, you don't necessarily need that anymore. No, because, like, well, and it kind of kills it. Uh, obviously, I have been in more than one situation where I knew my amp sounded pretty darn good from, from the speaker, but by the time it's mic'd and off stage or whatever, and then you hear it in your, you know, in my case, relatively cheap in ears, <laughs> it's just tinny and horrible sounding. Your headphones. Right. Your Apple, you know. your Apple headphones. Um, and then, then you feel like your tone's bad, and then you kind of play bad. Right, because you know, yes. if you got no sustain and it's that tinny sound, it's tricky. So, like sometimes the in ear modeling is better because it can give you that sort of that faux sound of success. Well, you're you know? you're modeling a mic sound of an amp, anyways, right? So in that scenario, you're taking sort of the guesswork out, I suppose, right? Like it doesn't matter if the microphone wasn't just right or on the right spot, the cone or. You know what I mean? You can take out a lot of the work and send that signal to the front of the house and then... Well, that's the other trickier yeah. rub, too, is like I've talked to a lot of guys that were, you know, are in the pro level as well that have done the modeling thing for a bit, and they, they talk about, man, this kind of ruined my playing for a bit. Because like you get used to that sort of modeled sound, and then you forget how to play. It is different, right? it covers up it's, a lot of your... It's a little different, yeah. I can see that, maybe. In some ways, but don't get me wrong. Again, I do think it's 100% better in certain situations. And it, it is easy to use. Now, am I going to switch over to it? Nah. No, 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 it just, I just, I love tube amps. Right. I still like the, um, I like the heat. I like the same. I, when I was playing that super reverb, I have, a, I have a vintage super reverb. I fired it up. I took it, put it up to about volume five and I, and I just played a few chords and a few little lead licks. I was like, wow. And this went from playing, I was playing a five watt amp before. Yeah. And you forget, and this is what a lot of people mistake too. Tube amps are meant to be played loud. Yes. Five watt amps were, you know, were built as student amps or just practice amps originally. And then the happy accident of the recording, cranking them up and finding these great tones is a whole different thing. But they weren't meant to fill a, a theater. No. 
or an arena like these tube amps were built to do without in-house sound installs. I think we've talked about this before, like some of the manuals even in those old Fender amps was like, hey, how many hundred people? You know, this is for 200 people, like your deluxe reverb, right? A room with 200 people, that's what this is for. Not be mic'd, you know, because they weren't micing amps the same way. There was no PA stuff. And your singer can sing on channel one if you want to if as well. Right. If that, that can be your, your singing amplifier. Yes. We can buy an extra one, we'd like to sell you too. <laughs> um, that was the old 50s sell through or the 60s sell through. Now, now, if you can't, if let's say all you had was a super reverb, right? And you live in an apartment or somewhere where you're always playing on one and a half, <laughs> which is silent on some of those old super reverbs, you know, because you have that. It's not the dead space, uh, Oh, and then it's on. It goes from Man, nothing to oh, oh, oh god, my neighbors yeah. are telling me to um, move out. <laughs> so let's say that's true. Well, then maybe the modular is better, right? Because you could probably get closer to that loud experience in headphones, one hundred percent better, or with studio monitors. If you live in New York City, then it's totally better. You know, if you live in apartment settings. Even townhouse settings in some ways. It's tricky. It, it is tricky. And, and don't get me wrong, like I have heard some wonderful, with Axe effects and everything, they sound great. The Axe effects sounds really, sounds really awesome. amazing. I've still not heard it anywhere near what any of these amps sound like, but primarily because I'm hearing them through these little, you know, 10 inch speakers for a computer. Or like a, you know, it just doesn't sound right. One of our good friends sent me an Axe effects recording the other day. I don't know if he sent it, he texted it to you as well. No, is this um, our boy? Our, our, our one of our... Dude, I don't know if I listened. He did send to me. I haven't listened to it. Damn. I'm sorry. Well, I got so many... I, the text thing is just there's too many. <laughs> I know. But I, it sounded... When he and I talked about it, he was like, yeah, it was all Axe Effects, man. And it was... It sounded great. So... No, for recording, I th I, I was even doing this like in my recording days more like... And the technology wasn't anywhere where it is in the, right now. Like it's, it changes every year. I would find it much easier to use the in-the-box stuff to record. Versus like plugging in my tube amps, micing it up. It was just so much easier. Well, it's one of those things. And the sound was really close. It, if you were like a world-class engineer with all the stuff, you probably get a better sound from the tube amp. But for me, when I know nothing and I'm an idiot, like it's better. Oh, hey, this is almost there. It's dim <laughs> right. diminishing returns for me to like the time I'm going to put into right. that to get. And like, and just I just want to, when I'm just trying to record a track, I just want to get it done sometimes and have that sound. It, the technology at hand, but that, I'm not doing that with my playing. I'm playing just for joy. Now. And you're playing for fun, right? And yeah, and I mean, yeah, exactly. I'm just so. playing, I play in a room by myself a lot, with, and I love going from amp to amp sometimes. And I do think there's a weird mindset, like when you get into your playing for your job or even like part of your job, right? Like where you're making money and it's a tool, you get into that like tool mindset and it's not about so much just the pure an adulterated joy of, oh, I love to plug it in this thing and seeing the light come on and you get the smell. And the smell. There is a smell, right? With like a two man when they heat up and it's just, me and Mr. Mr. Brian Oz are talking about that. Yeah. <laughs> That's a weird smell when you get tubes and it's amazing. But anyways, um, you know, you, you just don't care about that, right? You care that it's heavy, that it doesn't sound the same in every venue, <laughs> that sometimes people might get wrong or you don't have the best front house tech or, you know, monitor guy or whatever. Or maybe you're your own minor guy, so you don't know. <laughs> right? You know, it, it yeah. could be the wave of the future as we go forward really is to, geared toward that. And, and it's okay if it is. There's still going to be these great tube amps. They're not going away. We just start like, you know, there's businesses right now tooling up right now to build tubes in the U.S. of A. That's true. Again, thank goodness. Is there a parallel there, you think, to like vinyl, to records? Are, are tube amps going to be in that world where people like the tactile thing and they're these purists but then most things are modeling maybe well, it might be a thing you know Joe Satriani used plugins on his new album no no real amps were used and, and that's quite alright he's always been a sans amp guy though he, he yeah. ever since like the 90s days like, and I would and I think Joe Satriani is one of the best players we have I don't think his tone's phenomenal agreed I've never like I've never been like a I love that tone shots fired <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no, it's just, it's just not my bag, you know, it's like, I mean, I, I, no, 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 I, I hear you. And yeah. like, people might li like what I like, it's, it's okay, it's, but if you don't like Wolverines and Red Dawn, then you just have bad taste. It's true. Or haven't been educated yet. That's different. It's like, not liking puppies. I used to think about, like, how great it would be if the Wolverines <laughs> had Wolverine. Like, pet Wolverines team. that would attack? No, 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 no. Oh. Like, the X-Men. Wolverine. Oh, jeez, can you imagine? Imagine if he was leading this wild, feral, like, guerrilla warfare 
thing against the Russians. I don't think the Russians are, or God, think about the poor Cubans. I know. There's up. Why would they send the Cubans to where it snows? <laughs> I mean, just think of that. <laughs> no, I just never thought about it until those words came out of my mouth. It's like, man, this is cold up here and lonely. I'm just saying, imagine, imagine Wolverine pops out and slices your tank in half. Oh, and then the other Wolverines charge and blow things up, and you're just like, you're like, Wolverines. That would be awesome. It would be, <laughs> think about it. <laughs> it's the crossover we need. Well, that, that's... <laughs> God, I was having this like story about crossovers earlier today, too. I, maybe it was like last night. I don't remember. No, it was with my wife. We were walking back from the kids, and we were like... You know, wouldn't it be funny, like we were watching The Last Kingdom and it sort of finished the last season, which was sort of definitely slow. And like, wouldn't that be neat if like that show morphed into The Walking Dead? You know, and there's just one TV show that sort of covers everything. So like it goes from that to like turn with the American release. But in between turn and that, you have like zombies in Europe. And that's why the Americans came to, to America, the Brits or whatever, whoever came over, the, the colonists. Um, and then because they're getting away from zombies in Europe. A.K.A. Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, which I'm not a fan of because I like Pride and Prejudice. Because he's then, a purist. <laughs> Pride and Prejudice purist here. <laughs> I am. It's important. <laughs> Kira Knightley, mainly. That, um, that, that version of with Dallas Hollywood and his father. That's, I'm very specific. But then, like, then, like, then eventually goes through time and American stuff. And then we have like Mad Men with zombies. Breaking Bad with zombies. Walking Dead is like pure zombies are now like taking over. The zombies are just like a small subculture in those periods. I mean, that's why the MCU is so amazing. Yeah. They can do whatever they want. Well, like now we're in like season four. It's all celestial, right? It's all cosmic. And we're getting all the mythology pulled in, right? Because we're about to get Egyptian mythology. Well, I didn't know that. Because it's going to be about? like, it's the Moon Knight, right? It's going to oh, be yeah. King the Conqueror. I it's, it's all, it's all. And then we got like I'm still watching Norse mythology with Thor. Original. We're about to bring Zeus in. It's all going to. When the Thanos is one of the Titans, yeah, which is so cool because that's part of the whole thing too, like the pre gods. Well, so basically the they Thors have they it. have taken this comic book weird thing and, and and put the scope of entire human history and explained it all, which all happened by accident. Yeah, right? like but this it's whole, amazing. This whole Marvel universe of like <laughs> Iron Man was just made to sort of like just sell some stuff. Yeah, and then it became this. They, they did not plan on this in the way it happened. But it's amazing. They that created they did all it. this around it after the success. Hats off. And, and enough of the this. nod to the actual comic storyline. I mean, like it's and Stanley crushing throughout <sighs> every film. And like, yeah. my, and my kid, my oldest one's like, he gets so excited whenever he sees Stanley. He's, that's that's that guy. I'm like Stanley, idiot. We just read the Who Is Stan Lee book. Oh, as cool. Part of our bedtime that's a good one. It's a very good one. Um, so he's a very wealthy dead man. It's true. And it's amazing. It's just cool. Like a creator, like creates something like that. Like I enjoyed it the first time around. Now I'm watching it with my kids, it's even better. It's awesome. Have you started watching it with your kids? Eh, I've watched some of it. There, Abby, it still freaks Abby out. <laughs> Losers. <laughs> well, I just we're we're waiting. No, we were it. watching like Infinity Wars. Where, like it just starts off a lot of murdering in the beginning. I'm not giving any spoiling. Like, but major people getting murdered. Yeah. And like my oldest son is just like, uh, like he's like like not happy. And I guess my other kids are like, yeah, <laughs> sweet, <laughs> finish him. <laughs> he's like, Dad, why are the villains so awesome? <laughs> I don't, dude, I want to be Thanos. I'm like, yeah, you do. And the Thanos' I mean, little henchmen are pretty tight too because they're they're yeah. like super loyal. To the end, you know, it's, it's, they're like, and what's neat about it, like, I do like this, like, Thanos is not a bad guy, and to him. No, he thinks you know, he's doing, like, the, he's the, doing the, the like, mission, the right? The Lord's work, you know, yeah. he's, um, I, I like a bad guy that's written that way. Are we talking about tube amps and modeling amps? <laughs> Whoops. But, um, <laughs> no, I do. So what would Thanos use? <laughs> <laughs> Thanos would use tube amps, 100%. He would snap and the modelers yeah, would like, be gone. Like Iron Man would use modeling. Yes, absolutely. Maybe, because I think he's like all about that. You know, I With the little core. <laughs> would they probably sound great. They'd have a weird hum from the energy. Mm. Thor's using tube amps. Yes. Um, Captain America, tube amps. Tube amps, 100%. Uh, Vision, nothing. He just floats around and stuff and it would just the sound waves would emanate yeah, from him yeah it doesn't matter that's all that matters but um, no it's um I, I do think i think they can live together and i th and i'm okay i'm not scared of them i'm not scared of these strange <laughs> modeling amps i i do get scared of technology sometimes i've fought cell phones for the longest time i was like i'm not interested my father has no cell phone or the internet <laughs> weird right yeah that that is weird he's probably happier yeah in this grumpy way. Like a pig and shit is what I was thinking. And that has a direct connotation to your dad. I'm sorry. But, um, uh, yeah, well, I mean, I didn't like a chicken and 
pretty much anything. Yeah, there's but, pigs too. There. There's pigs around. They're all around. Let Cows. us know your thoughts on this um this ever growing and changing universe of modeling and tubes in the MCU. Are they better? I think it's pretty fascinating. Are they worse? Do you care? Are you sick of hearing about it? <laughs> Is Hunky Dory the best David Bowie album? Just let us know. Maybe. Who knows? Could Maybe. Be. Is Transformer one of the greatest albums ever by Lou Reed? Maybe too. Maybe not. It's possible. Or as Jonathan would say, no, it's the Black Crow's first album. Yeah. Easy. <laughs> Do we say the thing? Hit the like, hit the subscribe, click the bell. I'm just here to talk. I'm just here to piss Derek off. That's all I do. That's, that's what we take the most pleasure in. That's right. Yeah. Goodbye. Take care.